Good morning. It's uh, February 10th of 24 and uh, we're back at the kitchen table just for a moment. Uh, I ended up, I got to make another gasket for this breather body that's on the Army D4 that I've been playing with for the last couple of uh, days here trying to get running, but I figure I might as well make uh, new gaskets because I did discover the last time the pony motor was running that this gasket was actually leaking oil as well. So uh, this is a pretty good example of uh, parts that have been compromised or broken, let's just call it broken, over years and years and years. And uh, I know a lot of people shy away from uh, these parts. They want to get uh, perfect, uh, you know, unbroken parts. But uh, the reality of the whole thing is that's not the life of the machine. The life of the machine has experienced, uh, you know, maybe a couple of wrong moves, a couple of bad mechanics, this, that, and the other thing. Broke the uh, tabs off for the bolts here to hold this uh, part down, and you'll find that across many old machines. I'm not opposed to uh, using these uh, parts again. This one has been really nicely repaired, not by me, otherwise it'd be falling apart already. But anyway, it's been repaired. The gasket face is nice and smooth and machined down, filed or whatever they did. The uh, edges where it's been brazed, not so much, but that's not important. The important part is it's nice where the bolts go through, gasket is machined, and this part will work just as well as the original unbroken piece. And I'm all for the story that goes along with it. But anyway, this is a, uh, a little short video of how I go about making gaskets, the smaller gaskets, for example, and, and, as in this case. I'm gonna use uh, just a cork material. Easy, it's not really the easiest to work with, but it's, uh, it's what I got. Again, part of the story, you're using what you got at the time. First thing I do is I'll select the area on the gas material and I will make the holes first on the gasket and next I will identify where this hole has to be cut in the gasket and I will cut that hole out in the gasket. And the very last thing you want to do is cut the outside edges. And the reason for that is if you cut the edges first it's a lot easier to handle, guaranteed but you've uh, narrowed out the spaces here, so when you do cut out your uh, holes, and I use one of these um, little hole punches. They're uh, quite, quite uh, well uh, suited for the job. And uh, if you cut it out on the edge, outside edges first, chances are you're going to stress your material. Cork is pretty forgiving, but the paper gaskets, you'll likely end up bursting it apart at the narrow parts. So anyway, I'm just going to uh, go ahead and, and uh, make a gasket. I'm going to make a couple of gaskets, but I'm going to make a gasket and I'm just going to go ahead and put it on uh, time lapse. I'm going to try that out. So you can just try to follow along on that. Okay, we'll uh, come back on the other side. Okay, hopefully that all gonna turn out. We have, I made actually two gaskets and this one here, it doesn't look too uh, concentric, but that's the shape of the uh, repaired body as I dealt with it. So it's got the hole in the right place, two bolt holes, full contact all the way around. So now my plan is on this, uh, once I get this uh, mounted or this gasket mounted into place, is to, uh, because I have a couple of uh, references on the last video about my electric start, I, that's just a, uh, a temporary starter. I just slide from one machine to another. Um, 
because uh, these machines I do have weren't originally rigged up for an electric start. I just happen to have an electric start that's made for the machines in my parts inventory. But I don't want to uh, rig it up in place because then I'd have to alter the dash and uh, I already got a couple examples of that out in the junk pile that people have cut rough cut holes in the dash and did all sorts of wondrous things, just ruins the look of the dash. And so I'm just going to uh, keep on moving my starter around, around and I just mount it on the fender as needed. And it works pretty good, but I've got a few uh, uh, comments in the on the last video about uh, back in my day we used to just pull them, that's the way they come out. Well, I, I have done that myself when I was uh, quite a bit younger on the farm. Now I've run a D4 long enough with the rope start, I know. And it was easy starting in my case, generally, but uh, this one here, I got myself a new rope. And uh, just to uh, see if it can be done, I am going to uh, pull on that rope until it's either started or the rope's worn out and broke. So we'll uh, come on back to you in a little bit there when we're all set up for that. Okay, now that we uh, made ourselves outside, I did get that uh, gasket in that uh, breather in place, but I'll uh, show you what I've discovered after that. So now I got a gasket up here and I got this gasket down there. And uh, the reason why it was leaking is because it's only a half a gasket. So I uh, cleaned up the flanges there, the gasket surfaces and uh, installed my new gasket. So that's good. But at the same time, I was uh, wondering, like I seem to have a lot of oil. If you can get this thing to focus uh, a little bit. But anyway, I think you can pretty much see there's uh, a lot of oil, you know, the mag is wet, everything is wet in here. So, uh, looking around a little bit. Now, I don't know if I'll be able to make you, or make it able to see. I'll just set this down and tilt a little. What's happening is, uh, I think you can hear and see that. That's probably a... A good quarter inch of uh, end play. I think that's uh, too much end play in anybody's book. Anyway, while I've fixed the uh, gasket there, I did uh, put a little, uh, you know, maybe a cup full, half a cup full of ATF into the crankcase just to uh, clean it up uh, when we get it started. It will start. One way or another, it's either going to start with the uh, rope or it's going to start with the electric. But, uh, you know, let's just take a look here on the dipstick. Yeah, it's uh, pretty thin. I'm going to end up, uh, after we're done playing with this thing today with the rope, I'm, we're gonna be uh, dumping that oil. I figure I'll just leave it on uh, regular recording and uh, try that. Uh, who knows, might get lucky. But if it's gonna be a long-term thing, I'll just put it on time-lapse. Okay, what I got here is uh, half throttle, and I got the choke right out. Gas is on, so let's just see what's going to happen.
Well, that is totally amazing. Never in a hundred years I would have thought that that would have happened. That uh, reminds me of uh, back in the day when I was on the farm. My dad had a D4 and I was still a kid then. And I remember that D4, dad had it tuned up pretty good. Like if it, what, it didn't start in one pull, it for sure started in two. And it didn't really matter if it was uh, summer or winter. And uh, yeah, like that's uh that was an easy starting cat, and I don't know why this one is, because uh, I've tried ropes starting my other cats. No, it's uh, that's a workout. But this here is going to be a awesome machine here if it just one pulls to start. But anyway, this uh, I think you can see that in the the picture or the video that flywheel travels back and forth. So uh, the main bearings are. Uh, are well they're uh done they need to be replaced but moreover there's a little dowel pin on the inside main here that uh, the dowel pin's probably out so that uh, bearing is actually spun in the in the block so all that needs to be uh overhauled and uh so now it's even uh worse news i thought i was just gonna pick the pony motor up and replace my pinion or fix my pinion engagement uh, device here to turn the big diesel. But once I lift the motor up, I might as well uh, tear it down. So it's going to be a big thing. And if I'm going to be tearing it down, I might as well open up the back end here and fix the master clutch and the two steering clutches. So it's going to be a big, long, drawn out affair. And uh, so I better uh, get myself back onto that uh, 39 wide track. 7j and get the uh get that machine back together and running and then we can put this in its place and tear it down do the same procedure over again anyway that's all we got for now we'll catch up to you later